Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble. I am so excited to be here today with Jamie Friedman from Pandora. Pandora is, I feel like a just a longstanding institution as far as like streaming platforms go, which is funny to say, like longstanding institution of how long has Pandora been around? I mean, in some form or another, it's been around for 20 years or more. Okay. So mm-hmm. I guess in a way, like streaming services, it is actually a long sto- long-standing institution. Um, but I'm just excited to have her here to talk about their AMP platform and how you guys can really utilize all these awesome tools that they've created for you to um, get, you know, get the word out to your fans about things that you're doing, do some cool things with your fans that, you know, allow cause that connection that you want to have with them um, that you can't, you know, do with other streaming platforms. So before we get into that, though, I would love to hear, Jamie, your background a little bit of how you got into working in the music industry and then how you ended up working at Pandora. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, Bree. Um, I love the way you explain. It's always fun to hear other people explain you like things that you talk about all the time. Like, Oh, I have to remember that one. That one was a good one. <laughs> um, great job. Um, so I'm from Southern California. I was born in Southern California and I live in Northern California now near San Francisco. And, um, I grew up in like the industry and like decided not to go that route. It's <laughs> kind of funny. Um, so I, and been a music lover my whole life, starting in school and decided to do music education. And of course, now my cat is meowing at me. So I apologize. That's what they do. It's like, oh, we're talking. Am I talking? Um, <laughs> so I, I went into academia. Um, I was going to teach music. Um, I started off doing music ed, um, decided I didn't want to conduct for a living. So I ended up doing ethnomusicology um, and got um, a bachelor degree from the University of Michigan and a master's degree from ethnomusicology from the University of Texas in Austin. Loved it. Um, Lived, breathed music all the time. And then on the side was like working for nonprofit theaters like the Kennedy Center and regional theaters, just selling tickets because I love arts and the performing arts. And then um, I broke up, academia and I broke up and (laughs) moved to the Bay Area um, in my late twenties. And because the tech world is big here, I just started applying for like all of the music jobs, um, and sort of like worked my way through during the recession. I had my own little consulting company for a while that I, I worked with bands and artists and other startups and, um, eventually, um, landed a job at Pandora, like years later. Um, and I had applied for this job eight years ago, which is really funny. And now the guy who got that job that I applied for, I work with now, so it's, it comes full circle. Um, so yeah, I help folks use AMP, which is the artist marketing platform on Pandora. And then I program classical music on the side um, because I have that background um, through my um, ac- academia stuff. Oh, and I'm a trained singer. So I've, I sing in choirs, I've sung opera, Um, But then I've also been in like Afro pop ensembles and klezmer bands. And so I, uh, I just like being around music and musicians in any way. And I, I sort of happen to be one, but, um, and that's always fun, but I really just like hanging out with musicians and helping folks do their thing. So whatever that means, whether it's selling tickets or, you know, getting more spins on streaming services. Like I just, 
I want there to be more music in the world and I want it to be accessible to whoever wants to hear it. So that's kind of my, my drive, I guess, that I've been trying to just do forever. So here I am. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we really have, we have similar backgrounds and we like switch places. Cause I went from Northern California to Southern California. <laughs> and you know, I, we, I was classically trained as well, been in choirs forever. So we have very similar backgrounds. And I also have that drive, like you said, to be around music and to just want to create, help people create more music in the world. Yeah. And really the way to do that is to make sure that they've got people that are listening to their music and supporting them so they can keep making more music. Right. We can't just keep making it in a vacuum and like uh, draining our bank account every time we want to make music. Oh, you could still do that too, but you can help eventually, (laughs) you know, unless you have a rich relative or, you know, something it's, it's going to run out. It's true. But, um, I just wanted to, first of all, I wanted to ask, like, why did you end up breaking up with academia? I'm just curious because I, you know, I had a background in, in classical. Um, I was a oh. classical vocal performance major. My husband isn't, an, is a prof- an English literature professor. So like I have, I've definitely been in the world of academia and around it. Um, yeah. And I'm also curious, like, did they teach anything well, I know you were in ethnomusicology, so probably not in your area, but like in the universities you worked in, did they teach anything about like the business side of music? Ah, um, I know that at the University of Texas, when I was there in the early aughts, um, there was a music business program uh, for undergrads. So I know that they did have that. And I'm sure at Michigan, they do too now. But when I, I had, I don't know if I ever had access to it. In my program. I certainly didn't. And I went in the nineties. So (laughs) yeah. Yeah. And I knew that they, it existed. Um, but your other question, Oh, why I broke up with academia. Um, it might've just been like, (laughs) I, I don't want to say I was a bad student. I think that after a while I didn't buy into it anymore. And I got a little, there were some incidences that I remember that I just realized that like, my colleagues were really out of touch with what was happening. And I think I was just like, why am I doing this? Like, like I remember it's a long story, but I remember finding out that we were reading a paper about the Buena Vista social club documentary. Uh, and like the, the paper was not very um, flattering to the movie. Um, and, you know, for a lot of like white liberal criticism that I, I recognize now um, exploitation and blah, blah, blah. And so my classmates are, you are going to get the long version Um, Mm -hmm. that my classmates were ripping it apart. And like, I was really confused (laughs) because I was like, I don't know about you guys, but I went to go see Buena Vista Social Club in concert and it was sold out and it was beautiful. Like, I don't understand what your problem is here. Like these people are touring and making money. Mm -hmm. And I found out that none of them had seen the movie. And it was and the same thing with Lady, uh, Lady Smith Black Mombazo. That was a similar situation that mm. happened. And I was like, this is not, we live in the real world where people need to make money, you know, and to, and like, if they're touring and making money, that's a win, <laughs> you know, like they're traveling to the United States and selling out concerts. So it's just kind of weird. And um, also the academic life is a grind. Like I have a friend who stayed in it and she's incredible. She wrote her, dissertation on psychobilly. Um, there's a whole chapter on monsters and she's living in Texas, you know, and somewhere outside she's from California and not that there's anything wrong with that, but like, you have to go where the jobs are. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like there's a billion ethnomusicology jobs and you got to play the tenure game and it's a whole thing. And, um, I'm not sorry not to be in it. Although I do get really jealous when she tells me about her classes and her students Mm. I just sort of see it now as that I'm teaching, but in another way. Absolutely. You are. And I love, yeah, I totally agree with that perspective. I do think that sometimes like academia can get heady for only being heady. You know what I mean? Like, like people are trying to one up each other on their criticism of this or that. And, and like, there is definitely like this removal from kind of like Oh, the plebeian, you know, pop culture yeah. or whatever. <laughs> and so I love that you kind of like now 
you're in a place where you're actually like, Hey, I'm on the ground level, like helping actual musicians make actual money. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I'm, I loved school. I loved it. I remember thinking when I was in grad school that I was, ex- I was exhausted and I was tired, but I was very happy. Like I remember I it was, you were, I was just immersed in it all the time, thinking, talking, writing, reading about music. And like, it was awesome. So, you know, I, I would, I talked someone out of going to grad school for ethnomusicology, someone who was interning at Pandora and already had a job, you know, like she was already in the music business world. And I I said, unless you want to teach, which is great. You know, if you want to be a professor, if you want to be in academia, do it. But if you're just going to like learn cool stuff, which is great. We have podcasts. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's podcasts. You can read books and you can skip the boring ones. There's a lot of really bad academic writing out there. That was the other thing. It's like, I forgot. It's like, I forgot how to read. Like I would read Harry Potter on vacations just to like remind myself I could read. (laughs) Like that's, but um, there's so many amazing ways now to learn about music and musicians and, you know, documentaries and podcasts and, um, academia is great. I did it. It's not for everyone for all time. You know, I know a lot of people that got their master's degrees and now are off doing other things because they decided to do something else. So, yep. yeah, I know. And there's so many resources that are available to people right now, as you said, and, uh, and I love that. I like this podcast that you're listening yeah. to right now, exactly. where we're going to get into some of the really <laughs> nitty gritty stuff of like what you can do to, really, you know, help your career, your music career and connect with your fans by using a tool like Pandora. So first I'd love to find out like, what was the impetus behind creating that the amp, um, part of Pandora? I mean, obviously to help artists, but like what made you decide what to put in it and stuff? Well, um, so that I don't know when it was, that's a good question. So I've only, I've been at Pandora for two and a half years. Um, And a lot of the projects that we're working on now have been launched in the last two and a half years, especially since the pandemic started, because we've been trying to just figure out how to do this thing. Because usually we're going to South by Southwest, we're going to CD Baby, and we're talking to artists in person. And hopefully we're going to get back to that. We're meant to go to South by. One of my, my boss is actually in Chile right now talking to Chilean and South American artists about AMP, which is pretty cool. Mm. Um, But yeah, so it's, it's a, it's a platform to help artists who are, who have music spinning on Pandora, just reach their fans who are already listening and to reach new fans. So for discoverability, which is, you know, I know Pandora's sweet spot, the discoverability element of it. Um, We have tools to help boost tracks. We have tools that give context to tracks. You can add little voice messages or we call them artist audio messages. I love that feature, by the way, that is such a cool personal touch. Yeah. And when you combine the two, um, you can give context to a song, to a, a listener who is not familiar with you. So that's really cool. And then we have, we call it new, but it's not really new anymore. It's called Pandora stories. Um, it was launched when I first started. So that's to me, it's like new, but it's, it's a two and a half years old now at this point, um, where you can make a playlist and insert audio tracks in between. So you can talk about the music. So whether or not you want to like walk folks new your new album and talk about the stories behind the music, or if you want to talk about influences, you know, like why you love this song by Joni Mitchell. So, so much, or a special memory that you have. Um, I made one just for fun. That was about, a, I lived in, um, Edinburgh, I'm in Scotland for a summer in college and I threw myself into the music scene there and the early aughts in the UK was pretty cool. It was like that post Radiohead Mm. um, thing that was happening. And um, I went to a, I went to an outdoor festival called tea in the park and um, just something like so much cool music. And so I went back and looked, I have the roster because I kept the program. I mean, the, whatever, I, I guess you call it a program. And I just picked out some songs and like talked about like basement jacks. And I talked about more Chiba and I talked about Oasis, you know, and like the stuff that they had played there. And it was just really fun to like 
talk about this concert that I went to back in the day with some incredible music on it. Um, we've seen people make mixtapes of just music that they're listening to on tour. Oh, and then the other thing you can do is you can specifically call out um, geographical areas. So like if you're now that we're going on tour again, which is very exciting, you can say, you can pinpoint, you know, like the, the Detroit area or the San Diego area. And you can say, Hey, if you're listening, we're playing at Joe's bar on December 20th, tap your screen if you want to get tickets. So oh, that's awesome. Um, and then what's cool too, is that we also have a heat map, um, that tells you where people are geographically located so you can look at it and say, oh, I didn't realize we had super fans in Oklahoma. <laughs> Maybe the next time we're on tour, we should try to incorporate Oklahoma. You know, let's, let's stop by and, to, and, um, and, and see if, you know, we can, we, we, those, we can get those folks to come out. So there's a lot of really cool interactive tools. Um, and we help, my team helps artists use the tools. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Um, so just to kind of like rewind a little bit for anybody yeah. that might not know, like about Pandora, yeah. I'm sure people here yeah. do, but there may be some That's... people that are like, oh, it's just another streaming platform. Like other, what makes Pandora different from like, say Spotify or Apple music? So we, our bread and butter is, um, the music genome. And the idea behind it is that every, well, it's hard to do every track because as I've recently learned, as you might know, but it's like 40,000 tracks are released every day. It's insane. I know. <laughs> so, um, we have a team, I think it's about 20 music analysts that is their job to sit with someone's music for 20 minutes and they analyze the crap out of it. So they'll take a song and they'll analyze timbre. They'll analyze harmonics. They'll analyze rhythm. They'll analyze everything. And they give it a score. It's the gene. Each, each aspect has its own gene and they rate it from one to five. I think that's what it is. And that goes into this huge database basically. So when you listen to, I don't know, I'm going to, I, my friend, Samantha Margaret, who has, hi, Samantha, if you're listening, um, the, the artist that I've, I know she just had a single come out. So let's say you go to Samantha Margaret radio press play, you're going to hear music by her and music that the music genome thinks you might like based on those characteristics that are analyzed by the, um, the music analysts. So we've got 20 years of data. Oh, and beyond that, we have listeners doing thumbs up, thumbs up and thumbs down. Mm -hmm. So that also helps with the user engagement um, helps formulate what you listen to and what other people listen to. So it's basically, we're like all making this together. Um, I think that's one place that really stands out because I know, you know, Spotify has kind of copied some of this, like with oh, the yeah. algorithm, algorithmic, like, you know, playlists or like when you're listening to something and then it goes into something else or whatever. Um, and it does a good job, but you can't vote like, no, I hate this, you know, this yeah. don't play this for me again, or this was a bad match. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first used Pandora, I mean, way back, right. I probably at least 15 years ago, I just thought that was the coolest thing ever, you know, because I'm a big radio. I was like an online radio station person. I created women of substance in 2007. I love it. And, um, you know, so I was like, oh my gosh, I, can you imagine if like my listeners could vote on the songs and it would change like what played for them? That is the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I, this, not, I know somebody who really hates pink and I don't hate pink, but she just, for some reason she just hates pink. So she was just like voting no, whenever she got to pink and finally got pan trained Pandora not to ever play pink, <laughs> which I just think, you know, and that's, that's how you do it. I mean, I don't think pinks, you know, her spins are not suffering because of my one friend, but, um, it's really cool. Like I, you know, especially for me, cause I listen for work, you know, so when I get my, my end of the year wrap up, um, my playback, it's always like really strange because it's not really representative of 
my musical tastes. It's more representative, like, of what I do at work all day. But I do notice that I'll put on a station and it'll play. I mean, I was Laura Mavula, who is, I think, just this goddess from England. I just love her so much. And it'll play some Laura Mavula. And I'm like, okay, we're good. This is great. Like I, it knows me and it knows that I love her. Even when I'm like inundating it with all of this other stuff Mm. (laughs) that I'm doing for work. Um, It's very cool. Um, And I, I, I especially, if you haven't used Pandora in a while and believe me, a lot of people have not, I get it. It's totally fine. If you are inclined, you can go log in now if you're, if you, if you're able to do it and just like, see what it, see if it still remembers what, you know, 10 years ago. Oh my gosh. I'm so curious now I need to do it. Do it and see what happens. It's probably been since like 2011, since I've used Pandora, which is that's awful. Like I, I I (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I loved it's, you know, functionality and I'm not sure why I didn't use it anymore. Well, I can tell you what happened is that um, Spotify jumped in when they, I remember when it became available in the United States, because it wasn't, it was just a Europe thing. Cause I remember my English cousins told me about it. Um, And I think what happened is because they were better with the on-demand stuff and actually Pandora didn't even have that yet. And so we got in on that a little late. Mm. That's I think what happened. Um, And then if, Spotify is, you know, it does its thing. And unfortunately we're only in the United States because once you go international, you have to deal with all the licensing and, and on the ground stuff. And we would love to do it, but obviously it's a huge endeavor. Right. So, um, I, I think the, the word is that like, we would love to do that one day, but, um, it's not happening this year, put it that way. The other thing I want to say too, is to pitch, not to pitch, but just some, you know, some product marketing here. We have a new feature on Pandora called modes. So when you go in and you play um, a station, you can click on a different mode. And what it does is it pulls out different kinds of tracks. Um, So you can go to discovery mode, which will play artists that you might not know about, Mm. smaller artists. It'll, you can choose um, deep cuts, which is artists that you probably know, but maybe recordings you've never heard. Ooh, wow. So like outtakes or B-sides or remixes or something. And I think there's also new releases and not every station has this. I think it depends on the station. Um, and then we also have curated modes. So if you go to a genre station or some of the artist stations have them, you can listen to a hosted mode where you'll hear somebody like an artist talking about a genre that they like, you know, that, that they're in. And then they, they walk you through, it's more like a radio show. Mm. Um, so that's, it's cool. There's a lot of really cool. That is cool. Now, yeah, are there, and, yeah. are there stations for every artist? Like if you looked me up, would there be a station for actually, there's, not, there should be, if there isn't, we can get your, basically if you're listening and you're like, Oh, I submitted my music to Pandora, but nothing ever happened. Um, you can submit to get your music and anal- cause basically you can submit when you go through your distributor distributor, <laughs> um, you can submit to Pandora, but it doesn't automatically go live. And that's another mm-hmm. thing that we are fixing. We're not fixing, but we're going to change that because Pandora is traditionally a very highly curated platform. Um, but obviously that's not working anymore because there's just so much music and like humans can't do it all. So, right. I mean, we're just, so you can submit to have your music analyzed and then you can, um, and once it's analyzed, then you will have, once it's live and analyzed and you're spinning on radio, then you can have, um, a station to play. So any, so most artists, I wouldn't say not every artist has it because you have to go in and make sure it happens, but a lot of them do. Got it. So if people have submitted in the past, Um, let's say, you know, they have previous releases that went through their distributor. Mm -hmm. Can they still get those on Pandora or might they already be on Pandora? Yes. So, um, here's my little, these are the links. So it's amp.pandora.com, A M P dot Pandora.com. And so that's where you'd want to go. Um, you can log in. Um, just whatever, you know, if you've used Pandora before, you can use that login or, or create a new one if you wanted. And that's where you would go to make sure all of that happens and go through that process. 
Um, you're also welcome to go to our social profiles and message me. I, mm. I'm the one. Wow. <laughs> me and Michelle are the ones that handle those. And we've been building a community there. Um, you can also email AMP support and that's AMP dash support at pandora.com. So there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, but yeah, we can get you up and running. Um, we also have a station called AMP Fresh Cuts um, that is specifically for artists using Pandora. Um, and you can get spinning there because we don't have, I know that like Spotify has and other DSPs have a lot of, you know, pitching processes to get on playlists and stuff. We don't have that. Um, we, is, we have AMP instead um, to help boost your spins, which honestly I think is actually probably more helpful because you have more control over what you want to do, you know? Um, well, also, a, you know, with, with editorial playlists, it's totally like a, you know, luck of the draw or, you know, and you have to pay for it half the time too. Right. Yeah. That's a new yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. We don't, this is all free. Um, and yeah, so we have this amp fresh cuts where you can get on a station and get spinning and really get moving there. We've noticed that that helps. And you just play your own station, have your mom play your station. If you're not in the United States, ask an American friend to just play your station. That'll help just to get the gears running. Um, and yeah, my team, um, we're the creators, creator services team, and we are here to help you guys use amp and to get all this going. So, um, yeah, we, that's what we do. That's amazing. Um, so let me ask, this is like a, I know it's December right now. We're probably listening to this in January, but this is coming to mind because it's the holidays and also because I have a holiday album. So I know a lot of other artists do as well. How does the algorithm handle that as far as like the stations, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it wouldn't like randomly play a holiday song by somebody. Right. So the way that we handle that is that um, you're going to have two accounts and one will have in parentheses holiday after it. Oh. They do the same thing for children's music to help compartmentalize. It's funny because I program Hanukkah music. It's been like my joy. It's because it's ridiculous and fun. It is um, fun. Because Hanukkah music, like what is that? But like there's actually a lot of really fun, fun Hanukkah music. Um, so some of that actually has gotten through and doesn't have the holiday parentheses, but I guess so it's a, it, you should have it. And then once it has that holiday, um, you have that holiday account, then the, the, the Christmas music knows a holiday music, let's say I mean, it's Christmas music, but whatever, um, says the Jew here, um, yeah. <laughs> Christmas music, it knows that that's what it plays. Um, so we have a ton of different genre stations of various, um, holiday music and Christmas music and, Kwanzaa and, and Hanukkah. Um, and then the very, like, so let's say we went to your holiday playlist, your holiday station, it would only play other holiday music so that we have a special, and actually I think there's a special music genome for that. So it's its own oh. an analysis system. Got it. And yeah. would that mean I would have two different AMP accounts? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I asked this in case someone is listening that has that yeah. situation because I had no clue about that. So when you go into, yeah, no, it's a great question. It's, it's just the details, you know, of like trying to figure it out um, when you get your into your, into AMP. Um, and when you go in and claim your account, um, if, if everything's been analyzed, you should see like your main account and then the next one that says holiday in it in parentheses, you can claim both of those. Got it. Okay. So if people are listening and they've got stuff that they've put out already and they don't know if it's on Pandora, they should go sign up for their AMP account. Mm -hmm. And would they be able to, is there some kind of connection that they need to do? Yeah. So um, if you, if you know that you've submitted to Pandora and it's not live, you can submit the music and there's links on AMP for all that. If you see it live, but you don't have a station and you're not able to claim your account, then you need to claim, you need to get your music analyzed. And that's all, that's the submit button too. And then, um, and then once you're up and spinning, you should be good to go. You should have access to your AMP account and you can use all the tools um, like the artist audio messages and featuring tracks and stuff like that. Okay. And if you're putting out a new release, 
you would need to check a box inside of your distributor to say distribute to Pandora, right? Oh, I think no matter what, you also always have to tell them to distribute to Pandora. Yeah, okay. don't forget to click that box. But once you've distributed it to us once and you're live, it should go live. It should go live unless something like changes. You know, you go to a different distributor or like the mm -hmm. system is like, oh, we don't know you. Um, so if you see that there's something wrong there, um, you just need to you know, reach out to us, submit your music again, and we'll make sure that everything, you know, because like, you know, people move distributors, they move labels. They do. Have, in fact, yeah. I have several students that have recently decided to move distributors. And I always think, boy, that's messy. Like, you know. Yeah. Or like people decide to remove music or I, I I've, we've seen all sorts of stuff. Like people who have different projects or like they change the name, like, like there's Jamie Friedman and the Jamie Friedman band, uh huh. you know, is that, is that two different artists and each DSP handles it differently. Um, we're trying to clean up how we deal with collaborations. Mm. So like, for instance, with collaborations, it'll all be live on, on the pages where the collab, you know, the collaborators are on, but in your amp account, you'll have a separate amp account. And that just helps keep things clean from the back end. But if you do a lot of collaborations, which I've seen, um, you know, if you're, if you're, especially if you're into like electronic dance music or hip hop and you do a lot of collaborations, I, so in classical, it's all collaborations mm -hmm. from the, from the metadata standpoint. So it's, a, it can be a little messy, but you know, that's how, that's how we do, you know, you figure it out and you, you see what works and. Um, and, and that actually, if you have more than one account, that means you, you have more access than actually, because you mm. can do more things. Well, and, and what I love about this is that, that they have access to you to get help. The most I've heard from people, you know, of these nightmares of like their stuff being stuck in limbo is with these big companies mm. where they can't get anyone to help them and they, yeah. they don't know what to do to move it forward. So mm. I love that you are actually letting them know to like, Hey, direct message me. We'll get this fixed. Yeah, we'll figure it out. And if I don't know the answer, I will ask you to email AMP support. And that's literally what they do all day. So, mm -hmm. um, but we can, we usually are able to do a lot of it. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, this has been really, really helpful. And I, I really hope that all of you guys listening, I know I'm going to go out and download the Pandora app like right now because <laughs> I also awesome. forgot how much I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> I really did. It used to be my, my choice of the way to listen to music admittedly before Spotify came along. So you're absolutely right. Um, but there's no reason why I don't, I shouldn't have both. And I think I will yeah. because I listen to enough music and in, in enough ways that I think it would be worth it to me. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you want to let them know that they can do with AMP that you know, is going to get them really. Yeah. Excited. So, um, the other thing that I didn't mention is that if you're listening and you're like, this all sounds really awesome. We have, you want to learn more, but it's, it was a lot to take in. Totally get it. Um, we have webinars, um, every month on the, the first Wednesday of the month. So we just had, um, ours this last Wednesday, but we'll have another one in January. And then we also have office hours and actually that's next Wednesday. Um, and if you go to our, um, socials, you'll find those links in your, it's free registration. Um, it's Wednesdays at 11 AM and we answer questions. We walk through, we walk everyone through the tools, um, and they're free. So if you go to Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram and look for AMP, uh, uh Pandora AMP, A M P, um, you'll find it. You can click the links join us. Even if that's, that's the only thing you do, that's great. Cause we'll give you all of the links. We'll walk you through everything. Um, we have folks that come over and over again, cause they are interested in just learning more and seeing what, cause there's just there's such a variety of things you can do with these tools. And as you dig more into them, you can get more ideas of how to promote things. And, um, we also like, you can link out. So whenever it's another little thing. So whenever you do a voice track, you can see, you can say something like tap your screen to check it out, tap your screen to listen. And of course you can send folks to other Pandora URLs. Like if there's a new single, if there's an album, but you can also send folks to your website. Um, mm -hmm. You can send folks to, I think, you know, you can't, we, we don't allow like Spotify and other, you know, like competitor links. 
Um, but even like Bandcamp, if you've got merch on your Bandcamp, be like, hey, do you want to support me? Click your screen. I've got merch on my Bandcamp. I've got an LP out. You know, if you want to like, buy some vinyl um, or we're going on tour, tap your link. You know, so we want to make it easier for you guys to um, communicate with your fans. So, um, but yeah, so we've got the webinars. We've got um, uh, the socials. There's Amp Fresh Cuts. You should listen to that. It's an eclectic mix of up and coming artists who are using Amp like yourselves. Mm. Um, and you can pitch songs to us. Um, they have to be less than two months old. Um, so they have to be new. And then, um, yeah, what was the other thing? Anyway, amp.pandora.com. If you want to, that's the one thing you want to take away. It's amp.pandora.com. Um, if you want to check that out. That is fantastic. I love that you guys are giving everybody all this hands-on help in order to use your tools. So thank you so much for explaining all of this. You're welcome. And, um, I, it's funny when you say it like that, it sounds like it's complicated. I think at the very beginning, it seems pretty overwhelming. And then it, and then you're like, oh, okay. I think it is for yeah. any platform. I've just been building something on a new platform for the past few days. And I'm like, my head is spinning because like, yeah. there's so many options and so many things you can do and so many ways you can use things. Yeah. And you just feel like, oh my gosh, like I'm overwhelmed by options. Yeah. But once you kind of get to know the lay of the land, yeah, then you're like empowered by it. But yeah. so I do think people generally with any new platform, they first feel like, oh my gosh, it's another thing I have to learn. Totally. And it's another thing I have to do. And, you know, so they don't feel empowered by it yet until they get that, like just a little level of mastery, you know? Exactly. And we're here to help you do that. Like we get it. Everyone on my team is a musician and some we've got DJs and folks in bands and um, some of us still tour and stuff. So we get it. Like we, we, so we will gladly explain it <laughs> for the fifth time. Happy to do it. We do it all day, every day. So um, just let us know what questions you have and yeah, we just, we want, we, if you want to be on Pandora and you want to be using the tools, we're here to help you do that. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Jamie, for You're giving so welcome, your Bree. time and all this yeah. great information. I know the artists really appreciate it. Yeah. Hope to hear from you soon. Thanks for listening to the Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.